Our next guest is going to be Daniel Wyman. Thank you. Daniel is a, uh, well, the thing that I was, when I was checking up on everybody to write their bios, the thing that really intrigued me about Dan's <laughs> bio was that, um, uh, the first thing that jumped out at me is that he's a downhill mountain biker. That's kind of awesome. <laughs> Welcome, Dan. He is the CEO and president of PPC Solar, um, which is one of the oldest uh, solar installation companies in the Southwest. His father started it in 1979. They have installed over six megawatts of photovoltaic systems throughout New Mexico and Colorado. And in 2013, Dan partnered with Imagine One Day, a nonprofit organization that brings quality education to Ethiopia to raise money for solar on the schools that they build. Here to tell us about the work that he does as a professional and a humanitarian, I introduce Dan Wyman. Welcome, Dan. Thank you. Hello. Thank you for the great introduction. Is this thing working? You guys hear me? Hello, my name is Daniel Weinman. And I help people get solar powered. Uh, this morning we heard talks from Patty and Pratik about sustainability and humanitarianism and its significant place in our mar modern world. And that's relevant to what I want to talk about today uh, in our future in renewable energy. Um, and coming out of the dark. I came out of the dark at age seven. My family lived on a hippie commune in the mountains here in northern New Mexico. We were pretty isolated with no electricity, no plumbing. So while most children in the U.S. were watching Sesame Street and swinging on their swing sets, I was playing on the side of the mountain and filling our kerosene lanterns with kerosene. And I don't know if any, any of you are familiar with kerosene lanterns, but uh, they're kind of dangerous, a little bit scary, kind of like a controlled Molotov cocktail. <laughs> So anyway, my father, he was an electrical engineer, uh, but at this time he was on his spiritual journey and pretty much didn't have any cash. So uh, he was pretty creative, though. He found some deals on some used solar panels from an old government project that was being dismantled, got some old telecom batteries that were basically being thrown out by the phone company. This was the basis for our first solar electric system. Uh, he made his own control panel with knobs and dials and gizmos on it looked like an old Star Trek console. Then it was like magic. Flip on the light switch and we came out of the dark. Our choice then though was based on need, our need for electricity. It wasn't so much an environmental choice. But who knew that would lead us to where we are today? Although the need for electricity hasn't changed, the reasons for choosing solar today are different. And what I'd like to speak about here is how everyone should make a choice in where their energy comes from and show you ways you can be involved in a renewable energy future. Oh. Hold on a second, we're having some technical difficulties. Sorry, my presentation's kind of dependent on the next slide. <laughs> yeah, our age of connectivity and... Okay, here we go. Okay, back on track. Have you seen this image? It's a map that depicts light pollution across the globe. It's also representative of energy usage worldwide. You can just see how much energy the U.S. is using compared to the rest of the world. We actually, the U.S. actually uses 25% of the world's energy with less than 5% of the world's population. 
Obviously, we're not living in the dark. So that brings the question of what choices are we as Americans making for our energy? Reminds me of a story about my mother-in-law. She likes to come visit her grandkids here in New Mexico. She comes from the city, one of the bright spots up on the map, and then comes and visits us in one of the dark spots in, in the country there. And Well, I won't mention what happens to our electric bill when she comes, even though we have plenty of solar on the roof. Um, but it's at nighttime. She looks out the window, and she's like, wow, it's so dark outside. I'm like, uh, yeah, it's nighttime. <laughs> Uh, but she's from the city. She's used to street lights. She's used to lights being on all the time, and maybe the TV too. Um, but isn't there a little of that in all of us? Even myself, I can always think of ways I can reduce my energy usage, and sometimes I even practice them. Energy, though, is energy efficiency is the first step to sustainability. The less we use, the less we need to produce. So what choices, are we, what choices are we making for our energy? This is a coal mine in India. This is the nuclear reactor in Fukushima blowing up. What are our other options? Solar, wind, hydro, geothermal, among others. But today I'm going to focus on solar couple reasons. One is it's the easiest to implement on a personal level. It's also what I know. So what should your energy future look like? So why aren't we using this to power our homes and our businesses? We're seeing it a little bit, but saturation's not there yet. Anyway, the other day I was on Facebook, of all places, right? And I ran across a status from a Facebook friend who was very excited, saying, I'm putting the finishing touches on my new home. And I said, well, well, that's great. Have you put solar on it yet? What do you think her response was? I can't afford it. Well, that's a misconception. That's a common mis misconception. So I replied, saying, if you can afford to pay your electric bill, you can afford to put solar on your home. We can offer you the financing and the tools available, and we can show you how that works. Needless to say, she's on her way to a solar-powered future. There's a lot of barriers, or as I call, myths, regarding solar power. A lot of people think it costs too much. It doesn't pay for itself. It's not true. Oh, I'm the wait. The technology's going to get better. I just read an article that says 50% efficient solar modules are about to come out. Well, we've heard that since 1979, so don't hold your breath. Some people say it takes more energy to manufacture a solar panel than it's ever going to produce in its lifetime. That's not true. It's actually about two and a half years. The list goes on and on. But all the studies, all the facts show that the technology is proven, is reliable, and cost-effective. In fact, Sandia National Labs just recently published this, a report saying the panels are going to last upwards of 50 years. Now we have more people and more businesses choosing solar power for the economic benefit rather than just a purely environmental benefit. So why aren't more people getting solar? Well, several, several years ago, I met a gentleman who was an old-time northern New Mexico rancher, and he asked me what I did for a living. I said, well, I'm a solar guy. His response? That crap's for the hippies, it doesn't work. <laughs> I said, actually, sir, it works great. And I know I've been living with it since I was seven years old, so. But being in the solar industry for this long, I've heard many misconceptions, if not all of them. And by the way, that rancher, he did call me back a few years later. He wanted a solar water pumping system to get water to his livestock. Um, but don't be like the rancher. You don't have to wait. You can take, take it in your own hands now and stop renting your electricity, own it. I mean, anybody that's bought their own house, they know you don't rent your house, you buy it. Same thing with electricity. And there are some people that have figured this out, though. Case in point, 
Pinon Elementary School in Santa Fe. On Monday, we're going to be down there installing a 47 kilowatt solar electric system on their roof. 180 solar panels pumping clean renewable energy into this facility. Schools have figured it out. It's easy for schools to get capital improvement project funds so they can build new buildings, they can pave their parking lots, but they don't get money to increase their operating budget. So they found one construction project that they can undertake that'll actually reduce their operating costs, unlike building a new building, add solar power. What can schools do with more operating budget? Well, by reducing their electric bill, schools can pay teachers more, buy school supplies, buy new computers, get the things that they need to teach the kids appropriately. And guess what? This will work for government institutions, for the cities, for the municipalities. We can help them offset their operating costs and get more of that money coming back in operating funds. You know, maybe if the county got some solar, they could actually pave some of these roads. <laughs> So now we've talked about residential, businesses, schools, and governments. What are other ways you can get involved in solar in your community? Well, one way, if you cannot implement solar for yourself due to the fact that you don't own your own property or you don't have solar resources available, there's too many trees around your property, we've got a community solar array here in Taos. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of community or shared solar. But it's a term used to describe PV systems that multiple people can buy into or pay for a membership, and they receive the benefit, a credit, on their electric bill. This allows multiple people to invest in a single centralized PV system, which can have certain benefits. In Colorado, they've passed legislation to support community solar. They have great success with dozens of community solar systems all across Colorado. Here in New Mexico, we have one. It's actually here in Taos at the Taos Charter School. And unless we get legislative action here, we're probably not going to see any more. Do you think the utilities support community solar? Most do not. Luckily here, we do have a utility and members of that utility, Kit Carson Electric Co-op, that support renewable energy. And that can be seen by the fact that Kit Carson Electric Co-op is actually ranked number two in the nation for supplying solar kilowatt hours to their customers. So community solar needs your support because unfortunately it is considered by most utilities and regulatory agencies as wheeling power. So basically you're taking power that's not the utility's power, your power, and transmitting it from the community solar array to your home. And some of the utilities consider this a subsidy from either utili the utility or from the ratepayers, but unfortunately this discounts the benefits which greatly outweigh the so-called subsidy. So what about the utilities and solar, you ask? Well, utilities can also benefit greatly from solar. Uh, it was two weeks ago, I was speaking at the New Mexico Co-op Association members meeting, which is a meeting where all the New Mexico co-ops get together and brainstorm and share ideas. And I was asked, how can my utility benefit from solar? Well, this is what I told them. Not only can solar help you meet your renewable portfolio standard, which every utility in New Mexico has, they have to have a certain amount of renewable energy, they can also diversify their energy sources. You don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. Multiple points of energy on the system is, is good. Reduce transmission and distribution costs. You're producing local energy. It doesn't have to travel as far to the point of use. Create a levelized cost of energy, and this is gonna hedge a bit against rising costs of coal and natural gas and nuclear that we know the EPA is putting harsher rules on and the price of this energy is gonna start skyrocketing soon. Uh, dis distributed generation can also help strengthen old, weaker, overburdened utility lines and power lines and substations, which we have a lot of around here. And local energy production also keeps the resources and the money local. We're not sending our money out of state to some coal plant somewhere. It also creates local jobs and many more, much more, much, much more. So now you're probably asking yourself, how can I be involved in the solar movement? Well, advocacy can go a long way. 
Be involved, volunteer, become members of your local solar groups and nonprofit organizations. The Solar in Energy Industries Association has chapters all across the country. We also have groups like Renewable Taos here in Taos that are advocates and they're talking to the legislature about making new laws that are gonna promote solar in our community. You can write letters to the policymakers. You can ask your schools to support renewable energy and offer renewable energy programs and teach renewable energy to our, our kids. Find out where your schools and your state buildings and your, the government is spending money for new projects and make sure that they're allocating funds for solar. Urge your local government to adopt solar. You can also donate your time and money. Uh, there are solar projects being crowdfunded all over the country. One great example, if you go to joinmosaic.com, there's, in, there's investment opportunities everywhere, even here locally in Taos County. You can use social media to support that and advocate for solar projects and for disaster relief efforts. Okay, well, all this talk where we all have a wealth of energy, right? So let's talk about bringing light to people in the dark. Two years ago, my company built a small utility scale solar electric system out by the airport. Some of you might have heard about it. It's called Blue Sky. Uh, one of the project investors is involved in, a, in an Imagine One Day. It's a nonprofit organization that builds schools in remote parts of Ethiopia for villages and people that don't have these opportunities. A lot of these schools don't have any power. So I was presented with an opportunity to be involved with a campaign called Give the Gift of Light. The goal of Give the Gift of Light was to provide solar power for a small primary school in Abada. And we call it small, but it's actually not that small because they have 650 students. And hopefully we're going to be doing more schools in the future. But the Abada school was built in 2011 and has become the hub of the village. Electricity is one of the biggest impediments to progress in education in Africa today. In the Bada village, there's no electricity. The system will be life-changing for the students of the school and will also serve as a primary power source for the whole village. With our help and even yours, we can help make a huge difference in these people's lives. With just a little bit of power, we can help the kids have access to internet, which will aid in their education. You're going to get electricity to have night classes, so adults have electricity for classes at night and workforce training. People can charge cell phones and computers and get connected and, and start business. Everyday necessities that we take for granted, like a refrigerator for food and vaccines, even a lamp to read by. So our plan is we're going to build a 7 kilowatt solar electric system. It's an off-grid system. It's going to provide electricity, a clean source of electricity. We'll have AC power for their conventional AC loads, as well as DC power for water pumping. That's another thing the school provides is actually a clean water source. They're actually able to harvest water off the roof of this building, and it's the cleanest water they have because they have, definitely have water issues there. Um, the plan is to gather up all the equipment, materials, pack them in a shipping container, ship it off to Ethiopia, We'll follow three weeks later, install the system. We're also going to work with the local people in the village and train them to install the system and train them to maintain the system, to empower them to be able to repeat this process on their own. We're slated, we were slated to go this spring. However, the building that the solar array is supposed to go on got delayed in, in construction. And so now we're slated to go out this fall. And it might be a good thing because we still haven't raised all the funds necessary to get us out there. Um, since the inception of this project, we've been leveraging crowdfunding for the travel, equipment, shipping costs, everything we need to get out there and build this project. So far, I've been able to raise over $1,000 of my $5,000 goal. And the group collectively, we have a $26,000 goal. So you might be wondering, well, how much is the system worth? $26,000 seems like a lot. But if we were to install this system in the US, it would carry a price tag of 
easily $50,000 or so. But with seven kilowatts worth of modules donated, batteries donated, and we've gotten some deep discounts from some of our favorite vendors and equipment manufacturers, we've been able to keep our budget to a minimum. We already have a good portion of the materials, including the modules and other equipment that are staged at our headquarters right here in Taos, and we're getting, getting them ready to ship out. So we're well on our way. But I have committed myself to this project. The support and donations, though, that I've gotten from friends and family has been really inspiring. It has shown me that this project is more significant than just going to another country to install solar. It's bringing a whole community out of the dark. But to truly combat climate change, we do need gigawatt solar farms. We do need supportive solar legislation, but we also need people like yourself, people who are willing to think on a local level and global level to spread the word on solar and who will share with their friends, families, and peers. Therefore, you can help the planet transition to renewable energy and reduce the environmental impact and improve the quality of life for all of us around the world. It's time to start somewhere. It's got to start here. It's got to start now. It's got to start with you. Thank you.